This is Radio 2U Sydney, a member of the major broadcasting network. Eastern Standard Time is 8 o'clock. best-known fanfare in radio, heralding the radio event of the year. The Lux Radio Theatre is back on the air. Great plays from the theatre and movie centres of the world. Great stars from England and America in person. The cream of Australian radio talent. Our play tonight, Sorry, Wrong Number. Our star, direct from Hollywood, Miss Miriam Hopkins. Welcome to the internationally famous Lux Radio Theatre, brought to you by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, beauty care of nine out of every ten film stars. Lux isn't just the film star's beauty care, though. No. Pure white Lux Toilet Soap is so mild, so pure, so safe, that women everywhere depend on it to bring them lovelier skin. Smart women who have found out you don't have to be a film star to have a film star complexion. That's the promise of Lux Toilet Soap. It can do for your complexion what it does for your favourite stars. Try it, starting tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, as your host in this new season of great radio drama, the Lux Radio Theatre takes pleasure in introducing Mr. Eric Pierce. Thank you, Lynn London, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege and a pleasure to introduce this premiere broadcast in the new season of the Lux Radio Theatre throughout the major broadcasting network of Australia. It's more than four years since our last play, The Way to the Stars. And tonight, from the Rainbow Room of the Hotel Australia in Sydney, we are celebrating Lux Radio Theatre's return to the air with the first production in a series of truly international importance. Lucille Fletcher's play, Sorry, Wrong Number, is one of the most powerful radio dramas ever written. Its central role of Mrs. Elbert Stevenson, a challenge to any actress. How fortunate then we are to have as our star one of the great ladies of the American stage and screen, Miss Miriam Hopkins, who has flown from Hollywood in cooperation with Pan American World Airways especially for this one radio broadcast. It's indeed a magnificent commentary on the shrinking frontiers of our world when one of the really great dramatic stars can fly halfway round the globe for a special appearance with hardly an interruption to the demands of her career in her own country. Miriam Hopkins is the first great Hollywood star to bridge the 9,000 miles Pacific Ocean and appear on our stage. To her, on behalf of all Australia, we bid a hearty welcome. And now, the Lux Radio Theatre is proud to present Miss Miriam Hopkins, supported by an outstanding cast of Australian players in Sorry, Wrong Number. Night and city, the city of New York. Ten million souls living, loving, dying, talking. Underground, the automatic telephone exchanges. Acres of metal fingers miraculously plucking wires at the command of distant human fingers. Sometimes the fingers fumble, the metal ones as well as the human. A wrong number. In the city, on this night, a solitary light burns in an upstairs window of a great house by the river. Inside, alone in her luxuriously appointed room, is a woman who depends on those metal fingers. 
Mrs. Elbert Stevenson is confined to her bed, cut off from the world except by telephone. She is using it now. Oh, still busy. Come in. Excuse me, Mrs. Stevenson. I just came to tell you that I'm going now. Oh, but Eloise, Mr. Stevenson isn't home yet. Couldn't you wait a little longer? I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson, but this is the first night off I've had in three weeks. I was expected home long ago. Now that it's so late, wouldn't it be better to wait until tomorrow night? You could go as early as you liked. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson. You won't be alone for long. Mr. Stevenson should be home any minute now. Well, I've been trying to call him at the office, but I can't get him. He's probably on his way home. No, he must be there. The line's busy. I wish he'd called me if he was going to be late. I could have had somebody over. I finished my book and I get so bored when I'm alone, just lying here. Now, now, you'll be all right. Oh, please. Eloise, you won't go and leave me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson, but Mr. Stevenson said I could have tonight off whatever happened. <sighs> Those were his words. Eloise, you can have Wednesday night off to go home whatever happens. Well, he didn't know he'd be out himself tonight. He didn't know he'd be detained at the office. He did say he'd be home for sure. He'll be home soon. Now, have you got everything you need for the night? My pills, I can't quite reach them. Oh. There you are. Is there water in the thermos? Yes, Mrs. Stevenson. And the phone's right by your hand. Now, you've got everything? Yes, I suppose so. Now, don't you worry. Mr. Stevenson will be home any minute now. I have a delicious cold supper all prepared. He'll bring it up to you. Good night, Mrs. Stevenson. Good night. Oh, Eloise. Yes, Mrs. Stevenson. There are hardly any pills left. Will you take the prescription with you and get some at the drugstore? You can bring them with you in the morning. Yes, Mrs. Stevenson. Good night. Good night. Oh, I hate to be alone. I wonder if Ruth... Yes. It would be nice to see Ruth. I like her. Hello. Oh, hello, Cal. It's Barbara Stevenson. Barbara. Well, it's nice to hear you. I didn't know you were in New York again. We've been in town a few weeks, Cal. Albert had some business, so we've taken a house for the summer. But I haven't been at all well. Same old trouble? Yes. I haven't been out of bed ever since we've been here. I just can't move at all. I'm sorry. If we'd known, Ruth would have been over to see you. Well, I've felt too low to have anybody in. Is Ruth there? I'd like to speak to her. She's just getting into her glad rags. We're going out. Oh, I was going to ask her to come over for a while. Elbert's not home and I'm all alone. I'm sorry, Barbara. We're going over to New Jersey. We're staying the night with friends. Well, it doesn't matter. Only Elbert promised to be home and it's getting late. I don't know what could have detained him. Why don't you ring him? I've been trying to, but his phone's busy all the time. He must be doing big business to work so late. <laughs> it's just that I hate being alone in the house, especially at night. But you're not alone, are you? Where's your maid? Albert gave her the night off, thinking he'd be home early, and you know what these girls are like. If you say anything to them, they just up and leave. Yeah, sure tough, all right. But I wouldn't worry. Albert can't work all night. Mm. You just read a book for a while, and before you know where you are, he'll be home. Look, call Ruth in the morning. I know that she'll want to hear from you. Yes, I will, Cal. Good night. We'll have a good time. We will. Good night, Barbara. Oh, dear. I'll just try once more. But it can't still be busy. Must be out of order. Operator... Operator. Uh, oh, operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 40098 now for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line's always busy. Are you sure you have the right number, madam? Well, of course. It's my husband's office. But I can't see how his number could be busy that long. Will you try it for me? Murray Hill 40098. Murray Hill 40098. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. My husband never talks so long on the phone. He's working late tonight, and I'm all alone in the house. My health isn't good, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. 
Hello? Uh, one moment. There's your party, madam. Hello? Hello? Uh, Maria 40098. Hello? Well, is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? Hello, George? Yes, sir. Well, hello, this who is, is that? George. What number am I speaking to? We have heard from our client. Oh, really, I don't know about any client. The Will client, you please get sir. off my line? What did he say? He says the coast Ma is clear for tonight. Yes, sir. Where are you now, George? In a phone booth. Good. You know the address? It's a block of private houses. They have their own night watchman. Can we take care of him? It's okay. At 11 o'clock, he goes around to a bar in 2nd Avenue for a beer. He does it every night. Check. Operator. Be sure that all the lights downstairs are out. There should be only one light visible from the street. At 11.15, a subway train crosses a bridge. It makes a noise in case her window is open if she should scream. Oh, operator. Okay. Operator. I understand, sir. In through the window at the back of the house shortly before 11.15. Well, check your watch, George. The time is very important. Everything depends on the noise of that train. Yes, sir. And make it quick. As little blood as possible. Our client does not wish to make her suffer too long. Is a knife okay? Yes, George, a knife will be okay. Operator, and operator. remember, remove the rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer. Our client wishes it to look like simple robbery. Okay, I get it. Simple robbery. You sure there are no savings to worry about? Our client has taken care of that. Now, the address. You've got it, right? Yeah, the address of the place is... <gasps> oh, hello. Hello. How awful, how unspeakable. Oh. Um. Hello, operator, operator. Operator. Operator, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry, madam, I'll try and reconnect you. What number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 40098. Just one moment, madam. No, wait, don't dial that. I was calling my husband, but some wires must have crossed. I was cut into a wrong number, and I've just heard the most dreadful thing, and... Operator, you'll simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon, madam. I don't quite... Understand. Oh, I knew it was the wrong number, and I had no business listening. But these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they were plotting against some poor, innocent woman all alone in a house near a bridge. I'm very sorry, madam. It's going to happen at 11.15, so there's no time to lose. We've just got to stop them. We've got to. What number were you dialing, madam? I'll try it for you. Well, that doesn't matter. That wasn't my number. It was a wrong number, and you dialed it. And we've got to find out what it was immediately. But, madam, I... Oh, why are you so stupid? Look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 40098 That's for me. That's correct, madam. I dialed Yes, it. but your finger must have slipped. And I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Well, that sometimes happens, madam. Yes, I know, I know it sometimes happens. Now, I simply fail to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose. Why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 40098 in the same, well, careless sort of way. One moment. I will try Murray Hill 40098 again. Thank you. Oh. <sighs> I'm sorry. Murray Hill 40098 is busy. I'll try again in a moment. Oh, wait a moment, operator. Yes. Operator. Yes, madam. You didn't try that wrong number at all. I asked explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry, madam. I, I don't see what I, else I can do. You dialed a wrong number once. I simply want you to do it again. You want me to dial a wrong number? Yes. But which wrong number should I dial? There are over two million numbers listed in the New York directory, madam. If you got a wrong number, I'm sorry, but it could have been any one of those. I want the wrong number you dialed before. I'm sorry, madam. The best I can do is try again. Now, Murray Hill 40098, wasn't it? Can't you for once forget that number and do something specific? Now, I want to trace that conversation I heard by accident. It's my civic duty. It's your civic duty to trace that call. I quite see that, madam. I, I don't see how I can help you. Help me. It's not me that I want you to help. It's that poor woman those men were talking about. We have to locate them at once. And if you won't... Madam, one moment. Oh, yes, what is it? Let me connect you with the chief operator, Miss Curtis. She's been with the company much longer than I have, and I'm sure that uh, she'll be able to assist you. Oh, very well, anybody, but hurry. Miss Curtis, would you come over here, please? Coming. What's the trouble? 
I wonder if you'd pick up on 17. What's the complaint? Somebody wanting a call traced. I can't make head or tail of it. Mm. I'll see what I can do. 17, wasn't it? Yes, Miss Curtis. Hello, this is the chief operator. May I help you? Yes, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down. What exactly was the trouble? I've had such difficulty with one of your operators. I'm very sorry. You see, I've been trying to dial Murray Hill 40098 all evening. I kept getting a busy signal, and finally I called your operator and asked her to get the number for me. And she got me a wrong number. I'm terribly sorry, madam. Let me try for you. No! No, you see, when your operator dialed the wrong number, I was uh, cut in on, well, the dreadful conversation between two men. We've got to get that same wrong number again and find out where the two men were talking from. Now, can you trace it? Can you track down those men? It depends, madam. Well, it depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, well, of course they must have stopped talking to each other now on the line. I've been trying to get sense out of your operator for ages. It was at least five minutes ago, and they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well, I can try tracing it. Now... What is your name? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But listen... And your telephone number? Plaza 42295. But if you go on wasting this time... And what is your reason for wanting this call, Trace? My reason? Well, for heaven's sakes, isn't it obvious? I overheard two men. They're killers. It's a matter for the police. Well, have you told the police? No, how could I? With all the time I've wasted trying to have the call traced. You're making this check into a private call purely as a private individual? Yes, but meanwhile... Well, Mrs. Stevenson, I seriously doubt whether we could make this check for you at this time, just on your say-so as a private individual. <laughs> we have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sakes, you mean to tell me I can't report a crime without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why, it's perfectly idiotic. All right, then. Get me the police. One moment. I'll put you through to emergencies. Oh, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Emergencies? Oh, hello, operator. I want the police. Which precinct? Precinct? What's that got to do with it? I'm sorry. I can't hear you. There seems to be some noise on your end of the wire. It's only a train on the bridge. I'm sick in bed, and I've no way of getting up to close the window. Can you hear me? That's better, madam. I can hear you now. Well, I want the police. Now, get me the police. Which district do you live in? I live at number 53 North Sutton Place. But hurry. I want to prevent a murder. For a lovely lady, lovely, lovely nylons. And for lovely nylons, the loving care of gentle Lux Flakes. Soft, fluffy Lux Suds preserve fine stockings, make them last twice as long. Never trust your lovely nylons to harsh soaps that harm their delicate fabric. Use Lux. Those tiny Lux diamonds dissolve quickly. They whisk up into rich, luxurious suds and leave your stockings clean, fresh and safe. The manufacturers of beautiful stockings ask you to use Lux. They know Lux is so safe. The makers of Roslyn Hosiery say... We definitely recommend gentle Lux flakes for the washing of our stockings. Wash your delicate nylons with soft, mild Lux flakes and you'll get double the wear from every pair. Use Lux for dishwashing too. It's quick, clean and so gentle to your hands. Switch to Lux. Lux is so safe. Your hands, as well as your beautiful nylons, will tell you so. Our star, Miriam Hopkins, returns in Act Two of Sorry, Wrong Number. New York. Night time. Millions of people dialing numbers. The friends' numbers, shop numbers, right numbers and wrong numbers. Alone in the bedroom of her luxurious home on Sutton Place, Mrs. Elbert Stevenson asked the complaints operator to dial her husband's office. 
Suddenly, she heard two strange men on the wire, planning to kill a woman at 11.15 under cover of the noise from a passing train. Frantically, she has tried to trace down the killers. It is now 10.45. Operator, operator, this is an emergency. I am calling the 43rd precinct, madam. Well, try them again, please. Don't you understand? This is murder. Please be patient, madam. It's late. Oh. Sergeant on duty may be on another wire. So this guy gets fresh, so I bat him with my nightstick. You know what? His dental plate flies out just like he was a slot machine. <laughs> yeah. Here's your supper, Sarge. They didn't have no jelly donuts, so I give you French krillers. Okay, Sarge? French krillers? I get ulcers. Why didn't you give me apple pie and kill me outright? Sorry, Sarge. You said whatever they had. Hey, Sarge, answer that phone, can't you? All right, all right. Let me ruin my digestion in peace. Oh. Police Department, Precinct 43, Duffy speaking. Oh, Police Department... Oh, this is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. A murder? Hey, Spivak, cut in the recorder, will you? Uh, just a minute, lady. Okay, go ahead. Where was this murder, lady? Oh, well, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard plans for it on the telephone over a wrong number that the operator gave me. Oh. Well, I've been trying to trace the call myself, but everyone's so stupid. And I guess in the end, you're the only people who could do anything. Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. Spivak, leave the recording. But it was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Yeah? Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lives in a house near a bridge. Yes, ma'am. And there was a private night watchman on the street. He was going around for a beer on 2nd Avenue, and there was some third man or client who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Well, it's unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. I see. Uh, when was all this, ma'am? Oh, I, I, I don't know, about 10 or 15 minutes ago. Then you can do something. Uh, you do understand. And what's your name, ma'am? I told you, Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Elbert Stevenson. And your address? 53 North Sutton Place. And what was that number you were calling? Murray Hill 40098. Okay, I've got that. Oh, but that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 40098 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. And uh, if my husband were here, he'd do something. He's very good in emergencies. I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night out. And my husband knows that, so I can't imagine what's keeping him. I've rung the, his office, and he doesn't answer. And well, perhaps his phone's out of order. Well, surely if it was, he'd have connected, contacted me somehow, too. We've only been in New York a very short time, and I hardly know a soul. And I hate to be alone, even though my husband says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. But after this awful thing I've overheard... Well, we'll look into it, Mr. Stevenson, and see if we can check with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call if the parties had stopped talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, yeah? Uh, personally, I feel you should do something immediate and drastic. What good does checking the call do if they've stopped talking? By the time you track it down, they will already have committed the murder. Oh, uh, we'll take care of it, lady. Don't worry. I think the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near a bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue. And I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder's going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Oh, I don't know. The coincidence is so horrible. 2nd Avenue, the night watchman, the bridge... 2nd Avenue is a very long street, ma'am. Do you happen to know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and the Bronx. How do you know there isn't some little house out in Staten Island on some little Second Avenue you've never heard about? How do you know they were even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. Well, how do you know it wasn't a long-distance call you overheard? Oh. Telephones are funny things. Oh. Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? <laughs> Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing your husband had answered like he always does. I wish he had. I wish he had. He'd do something. Yeah, well, say he couldn't do anything. 
Would this murder have made any difference to you then? Well, I suppose not. But it's so inhuman. It's so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are committed in this city every day, ma'am. If we could do something to stop them, we would. But a clue of this kind that's so vague it isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking this call is phony. And that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, no, I hardly think so. I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I told you I hardly know a soul in New York. I see nobody except my maid, Eloise, and, of course, my husband, Elbert. And he's crazy about me. He adores me. He waits on me hand and foot. He scarcely left my side since I took sick five years ago. Well, now, isn't that nice? Back home, lots of people used to say I wasn't sick at all, but I am. They say things about my husband, too. People are very nasty, don't you think? But I know my husband. And I love him. And I know he loves me. Well, then, there's nothing for you to worry about, is there? Now, if you just leave the rest of this to us. But what will you do? It's so late. We'll take care of it, lady. Will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out? Lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require my immediate oh. attention. Idiot. Oh. Oh. Now, why did I hang up on him? Now he'll think I am a fool. Oh. Mm. Operator. Operator. Oh, operator, for heaven's sakes, will you test that Murray Hill 40098 number? All the time it's busy. Will you please see if they're talking on that line or if it's out of order? I'll try it for you. One moment. I don't understand. I just don't understand. I've tested Murray Hill 40098. It is in working order, but the line is busy. Oh, dear. Oh, if I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could get a breath of fresh air. Just lean out of the window and see the street. Hello? 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 Oh, oh uh, hello. Who is that? Is that Plaza 42295? Yes, yes, this is Plaza 42295. This is Western Union. I have a telegram from Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Oh. Is there anyone there to receive the message? Well, I'm Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get you for last hour, but line busy. Have been called to Boston unexpectedly on urgent business. Leaving by train, 10.50 tonight. Oh. Back tomorrow oh. afternoon. Keep oh. happy. Love, signed Elbert. Oh, no. That is all. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No, no, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. <laughs> Good night. No. No, it isn't true he wouldn't do it. Not when he knows I'll be all alone. Some mistake. It's some horrible mistake. Operator. Operator, try that Murray Hill 40098 just once more, please. Um. Oh. Ringing Murray Hill 40098. Oh, let him be there. Please let him be there. They do not answer. You mean the line is busy? No, madam, the line is not busy. The m number does not answer. He's gone. Oh, how could he have? How could he? Oh, but I can't be alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. And I'm entitled to... No. Information. I want the telephone number of Hensley Hospital. Hensley Hospital? Do you have the address, ma'am? Uh, no, it's somewhere in the East 70s, though. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out when I was in New York several years ago. Hensley. H-E-N-C. One moment, please. Oh, oh, please, hurry. And please, what's the time? My clock seems to have stopped. I do not know, madam. You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, couldn't you? The number you? of Hensley Hospital is Butterfield 82231, madam. Butterfield 82231? Well, thank you. B-U-T. 
eight, two, two, three, one. I'm just not going to be alone. Kentley Hospital, good evening. Nurses Registry, please. Who was it you wish to speak to, please? I want the Nurses Registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And what is the nature of the case, madam? Nerves. I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. My husband's away and I'm... Have you been uh, recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see that all this questioning is necessary. I want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital several years ago. And after all, I do expect to pay this person. We quite understand that. But registered nurses are very scarce just now. <laughs> and our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman, and I'm very nervous. I'm alone in this house, and I'm an invalid. And tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that's upset me dreadfully about a murder. A poor woman who was going to be murdered at 11.15 tonight. In fact... If someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. And when do you expect her in? I really don't know. She went out to supper a few minutes ago, but she shouldn't be long. And what is your name? Please? Mrs. Stevenson. And your number? Plaza 42295. I'll have Miss Phillips call you as soon as she comes in. But I wouldn't hold out too much hope. Our superintendent has particularly asked us not to send out nurses on nerve cases. Nerve cases? Might I suggest you call some friend, madam? But I've only been here a few weeks with my husband. He's on business here. The only people I know are out for the evening. There must be somebody, Mrs. Oh, Stevenson. there's nobody. Nobody except my brother. Then why not call him? Oh, what's the use? He lives 30 miles away in Connecticut. I haven't seen him in months doesn't like my husband. But you said your husband's away, madam. Yes. Yes, you're, you're right. I'll call Henry. He's the only one. Henry, Henry. Oh, what is his number? <gasps> operator. Hello, operator. I want to call my brother. Mr. Henry Smythe Woodworth, Westport Road, Darien. I'm sick in bed and I can't reach my Connecticut directory. Will you get me the number? What is your number? Plaza 42295. Now, quickly, please, operator. Oh, they take so long. Why do they take so long? The number is Darien 995. Well, call it, call it. Yes, madam. Oh, why did Albert go away? Why did he? I don't know. Hello. Henry? Yes, Henry Woodworth speaking. Henry, this is Barbara. Oh, Barbara, I was asleep. Gloria was asleep. The kid was asleep. Henry, you must help me. At 11 o'clock at night? What is it? Henry, I want you to come here right away. I'm alone in the house and I'm frightened. Alone? Where's Albert? Well, he's away and I'm so upset. I've had the most terrible evening. Henry, listen to me. I'm listening. Do you know about telephones? Sure, you pick them up in your dial and you listen to somebody I know about telephones. Well, tonight I dialed a number, at least the exchange dialed it for me. I was cut into a conversation, two men discussing a murder, a particularly horrible, cold-blooded murder. They were arranging it for tonight at 11.15 by a bridge. A radio program on the wire sometimes happens. You think so? You think it was a radio program? I suppose so. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm sure it wasn't a radio program. Henry, I'm frightened. How soon can you get into town? If I'd only called the office earlier, I could have stayed in and spent the night with you. The fact of the matter is, I plan to see quite a lot of you while you're staying in New York. But you know how Elbert is about me. He, uh, hasn't left you, has he? Well, of course not. He's in Boston on very urgent business. What made you say that? I thought things between you might be different now. Why should they be? Well, now that his Uncle Matthew is dead and he's got all the money for himself. Dead? His Uncle Matthew's dead. What do you mean? I'm sorry, Barbara. There's no sense in my pretending. You must know what we all thought. When the old man died and Elbert got his hands on all that money of his own, well, I mean, everybody did sort of think, well... That he'd leave me. Well, Barbara, you know what we all think about Elbert. We think he's treated you shamefully, but you'll never hear a word against him. He stood by me, hasn't he, through all the years of my illness? Some people might say he had no choice. 
But now that Uncle Matthew's gone and Elbert has money of his own, I wouldn't be surprised if he left you flat. He's that type. I thought maybe you thought the same, but wouldn't admit it, and that's what made you sick. If I've been wrong, I'm very sorry. I hope you'll accept my apologies. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Henry. Hello, are you there? Henry, where did you hear about Elbert's Uncle Matthew? Why, it was in the paper. I suppose Elbert flew out to Chicago for the funeral. When did you read this? When? Oh, the day after the old man died. That was about two weeks ago, wasn't it? I was going to get in touch with you, but I thought, well, she's always so touchy about Elbert. I guess I'll let her ring me. You mean to say you didn't know about it? I haven't been reading the papers these last few weeks. Elbert wouldn't let me see them. He said they might upset me. There's nothing upsetting about all that dough. Maybe you'll pay back some of yours he's lived on all these years. Well, sis, as long as you're happy, I'm glad Albert hasn't left you. Your three minutes are up. Do you want an extension? No extension. Thank you. Operator, operator. Get some sleep, Barbara. You're all worked up over nothing. Uh, give my regards to... Henry! 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 No, Henry! In a recent Broadway play, slender, bewitching Audrey Hepburn played a water sprite. The role was perfect for her elfin looks and exuberant talent. There was only one drawback. For her role, Audrey had to be made up from head to toe. The play ran for a very long time, and the liberal application night after night of metallic silver makeup must have been pretty harsh on Audrey's delicate skin. Yet, when you see her in Paramount's film Sabrina, soon to be released here, you will find her complexion as smooth, as radiant, as glowing as always. Her secret? Pure white Lux toilet soap. The soap that removes all impurities, makes skin clean and fresh deep down. Audrey Hepburn says... A Lux girl? Indeed I am. I think Lux toilet soap is a real beauty soap. You'll find it will make you lovelier too. Take the advice of enchanting Audrey Hepburn and, in fact of nine out of every ten film stars. They know the snowy whiteness of Lux toilet soap is the outward proof of its great inward purity. Their skin glows with beauty. So can yours. Use Lux toilet soap and only Lux toilet soap and you too can have a smooth, radiant, film star complexion. And now, Act Three of Sorry, Wrong Number Starring Miriam Hopkins. <laughs> Lying helpless, alone, Mrs. Elbert Stevenson succumbs to growing fears. The telephone call she overheard earlier in the evening has preyed on her mind, and she's been unable to find anyone to whom she could turn for comfort. Her conversation with her brother out of town did more harm than good, for now she has an additional worry. Her husband's unaccountable business trip to Boston and the death of his wealthy uncle. Hello. Hello. Information? Oh, information. I want a located number. It's very urgent. Yes, madam. What is the party's name and address? Well, I, I don't know the address. It's my husband's secretary. Her name is... Uh, Oh, uh, Bronfeld. How do you spell that? Oh, I don't know. B-R-A-U-N, though I expect. Anyway, the first name's Lillian. She lives somewhere over on the west side. One moment, uh, madam. <laughs> there are two Lillian Bronfelds listed on the west side, one on West 59th Street and one on Morningside Heights. Well, it must be the one on 59th Street because I know she takes a cross-town bus to work. That is Lillian S. Bronfeld. The number is Columbus 73621. Thank you. C-O-7-3-6-2-1. Oh, dear. Hello. Hello, Miss Bronfell. Uh, yes. Oh, is that Miss Bronfell? Yes. Oh, uh, Miss Bronfell. Thank God I found you. I had uh, no idea of your address. I located you through the telephone company. Uh, who is that? Well, this is Barbara Stevenson. Uh, 
Who? Uh, you're my husband's secretary, aren't you? Uh, Albert Stevenson. Oh, Mrs. Stevenson, of course. I didn't recognize your voice. <laughs> Miss Brownfield, this is vitally important. Uh, did my husband know about his uncle in Chicago, that he was dead? Why, of course, Mrs. Stevenson. He flew out for the funeral. When was that? Well, about two weeks ago. Yes, it was on the Monday. Uh, why? Is something the matter? I didn't know. He didn't tell me. He said he had some business in Philadelphia, and he was staying there overnight. Oh, no, Mrs. Stevenson. He went to Chicago. I made the plane reservations myself. I thought he's not telling you. Perhaps he didn't want to upset you. Miss Brownfell, I need your help desperately. Why, of course, Mrs. Stevenson. Anything I can do. Well, you must tell me. Has there been anything unusual about my husband's behavior lately? Well, he has been rather worried. Worried about what? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm no longer working for Mr. Stevenson. I quit this afternoon. Why? What was wrong? I don't like the type of people he's been dealing with. I can't afford to be mixed up in any trouble. Uh, what sort of trouble? Well, the usual, I guess. <laughs> Money. Uh, Money? But Mr. Stevenson is a very wealthy man now that his Uncle Matthew is dead. Oh, no, <laughs> Mrs. Stevenson. He's been borrowing heavily <laughs> against his uncle's money, and then the old man didn't leave him a penny. Cut oh. him off completely. Mr. Stevenson got a terrible shock. That's why he's gone to Boston tonight to try and raise oh. some money from friends. But he could have asked me. I would have let him have it. Oh, I don't suppose he liked to ask you for any more. You've been too generous as it is these last few weeks. All those checks. What checks? I haven't signed any checks in months. Oh, but there must be some mistake. I've paid them into his account myself. A great amount of money. But I haven't made out a single check in months. Except to my insurance company. Your what? My insurance company. Miss Brownfell, you mentioned my husband's business acquaintances. What was wrong with them? Well, Mrs. Stevenson, there's one man in particular who's been in to see him a lot lately. Yes. I've read about him in the paper. I felt it my duty to warn Mr. Stevenson. He has a bad record. Well, what, what sort of record? Oh, robbery, violence, things like that. He came out of jail only a few months ago. Oh, no. M Mrs. Stevenson? Is there something wrong? Miss Brownfell, I must call the police immediately. What? But, Mrs. Stevenson, uh, There's I... not a moment to lose. I'll call you back. Oh. 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 Operator, operator. Number, please. Uh, the police department, quickly. Quickly. Which precinct, madam? Just get me the police. It will facilitate the handling of your call if you will tell me which precinct you require. Sutton Place. I live in Sutton Place. That would be precinct 43, madam. I'll connect you. Yes, yes. Oh. Answer. Answer. Oh, why don't you answer? Hello, hello. Police Department, Precinct 43, Duffy speaking. You've got to get a man up here immediately. What's the trouble, lady? Where are you speaking from? Those men, I found out. What men? Who, who's speaking? It's Mrs. Stevenson. Listen to me. Mrs. Stevenson up in Sutton Place, the lady that phoned in earlier? Yes, yes. Uh... What can we do for you now, Mrs. Stevenson? Oh, I want you to send it up a man, please. Please send him now. It's a matter of life and death. Uh, we've been into all that before, and I told you not to worry. But it's me they're going to kill. It's me. Now, now, Mrs. Stevenson. You didn't tell me that before. I didn't know it before. Who'd want to murder you? Now, you've been thinking about those men you heard, and it's got into you. In the whole world, is there a single person who'd want to murder you? Tell me that. I don't know. But is there? Yes, my husband. But you said you loved your husband, and your husband loved you. I do love him, I do, but he's in terrible trouble. He must be stolen all my money, and there are men after him for more. And they may be planning to kill me for my insurance. Well, where is your husband? He's gone to Boston tonight to raise more money. The secretary said so. But perhaps he doesn't want to be here when I'm killed. Now, lady, let me get this straight. <laughs> You're trying to charge your husband with attempted murder. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm frightened. Oh, I'm terribly frightened. Please send a man up here. Mrs. Stevenson, don't you know there's an ordinance against putting in misleading calls <coughs> to the police department? Oh. Uh, you're upset. How about you rest up a while, take a sedative? Won't you believe me? Think things over, Mrs. Stevenson. You'll see how silly you're being. Sergeant, please. I... Now listen to me, Mrs. Stevenson. This time I'm not going to do anything about your making this false call. I know you're disturbed. But if you go on calling me again, I might have to be pretty severe with you. 
There are a lot of lawbreakers in this city, and we have enough trouble catching them without people like you wanting our nice young officers for company. Now, good night, Mrs. Stevens. Oh, don't hang up. You said a while ago that there's a private night watchman in your block. Get him in to keep you company. I can't move. I can't get to the window to call. Well, there's lots of apartment buildings around Sutton Place. Why not call the desk of one to have them send your night watchman to you? He must have a key. Yes. Oh, yes, he has. Good night, Mrs. Stevens. Good night. Oh, Riverside Hall. Riverside Hall. Oh. Information. Information. Will you give me the number of the building across the street? What is the address? It's Riverside Hall in North Sutton Place. Please, it's terribly urgent. One moment. Oh, hurry, please, hurry. Riverside Hall, 58 North Sutton Place. The number is Plaza 46363. Thank you. L4636. Three. Hello. Hello. Oh, somebody answer. Riverside Hall, good evening. I want to speak to your doorman. Certainly. Just a moment. Oh, dear. Doorman. Oh, this is Mrs. Stevenson. I live across at 53. Oh, yes, madam. I must talk to our night watchman immediately. Have you seen him around? Well, yes, madam. I saw him a few minutes ago. But can you find him now, can you? I don't think so, madam. But why not? Why can't you find him? When I saw him, he was just going around the corner for some supper. That's about 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? What's the time now? Ten minutes past. Oh, dear God. Then you must come over to my house. Now, do you hear? I'm sorry. I'm an employee oh. of this building, madam. I can't leave the door. But as soon as I see the watchman, I'll send him over. Good night. Oh, oh won't anybody help me? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Hello. Oh, for heaven's sakes, who is it? <laughs> oh. Operator. 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 Operator, I'm going bad. The phone keeps ringing and ringing. No one answers. I can't get anyone I want. And I'm alone. And I can't stand it. What seems to be the trouble, madam? The whole world can be murdered for all you people care. And now my phone's driving me crazy. Ringing and ringing and ringing every five minutes. And when I pick it up, there's no one there. I'm sorry, madam. If you'll hang up, I'll test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to send somebody around here right away. If I don't have somebody to send to, I'll go out of my mind. I'll try and check your number, madam. Oh, check it, check it. That's all anybody can do. Of all the idiotic... <laughs> Hello? Stop ringing. Do you hear? <laughs> Answer me. Who are you? What do you want? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? You're driving Is me so crazy. Is this Stevenson? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is Henchley uh, Hospital. Miss Phillips has returned and regrets that we are unable to provide you with a nurse this evening. <laughs> if you would care to call back in the morning. The morning. <laughs> oh, I may be dead in the morning. <laughs> get off this line. I beg your pardon, madam. Get off this line. I've got to get help. Help. There must be someone. <laughs> That one. Oh, hello, operator. Operator. What is your number, please? Pleasure for uh, two two nine five. Get me dairy and Connecticut. What number, please? Oh, I can't remember now. Uh, yes, it's it's dairy and nine nine five. One moment. Operator, operator, hurry, can't you please? Yes, madam. I won't keep you a moment. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Oh. Hello. Henry, is that you, Henry? Oh, Barbara, not again. Henry, you're the only person I can turn to. You've got to get somebody over here right away. Anybody. I told you to get some sleep. Henry, the woman I heard about on the phone. It's me. What? 
It's me who's going to be killed at 11.15. Well, don't be silly. Henry, listen, I spoke to Albert's secretary. He's stolen all my money. Uncle Matthew didn't leave him a state, and he's in terrible trouble. He's having me murdered for my insurance. I've called everyone and no one listens. The police, the night watch, but the hospital. And no one will come and help me. But I... What was what? That the click just now on my telephone as if someone lifted the receiver off the hook extension phone downstairs. Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure there's someone in the house. Someone's downstairs in the kitchen. They're listening to me now. Oh, what do I do? Barbara, you're not imagining this. Won't anybody believe me? Won't anybody believe Barbara, me? Barbara, if you're sure there's somebody in the house, you've got to get up and lock yourself in your room. You'll be safe that way. I can't move. I can't move. If I haven't moved for weeks. Never mind. You've just got to. I'll call the police right away and get them to come around. Oh, they won't come. Nobody come. I'll get them. Now, listen. Get out of bed. Roll out. Drag yourself out. Anything. Get onto the floor and get over to the window somehow and scream. It's not too late. There'll be plenty of people about this hour. I can't, I can't. It's no use. You can do it somehow. Get out of bed now. <laughs> operator, operator. Operator. Operator, I'm in desperate trouble. I cannot hear you, madam. Please speak louder. I don't dare. There's, there, there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? Your call, please. What number are you calling, madam? You've got to hear me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with, with the... Oh, there it is. Put it down. Put down the extension. He's coming. He's coming up the stairs. Oh, his feet are on the steps. The police. Get the police. The police. Oh, hurry, for God's sake. Hurry. Don't come near me. Don't come near me. I'm calling the police, see? I'm calling the police. Don't come near me. Get away. Get away. No! Not the knife! Oh, please, please. Please, for God's sake, no. No! Police Department, Precinct 43, Duffy speaking. Hello, this is the Police Department, Duffy speaking. Police Department, Duffy speaking. Sorry, wrong number. Our star, Miriam Hopkins, will join us in just a moment. No matter how lovely a woman is, she's far more beautiful when she's smiling. If her smile is truly radiant, if her teeth are white, bright and sparkling, if she gives her teeth the kind of care that keeps them healthy and fresh frees them of the film that gathers after every meal, the dingy, dulling film that hides the natural whiteness of her teeth and harbors decay-causing enzymes. No need to worry if you use Pepsodent. Pepsodent is the only toothpaste containing irium, the wonder ingredient that wipes out film instantly and completely. Use Pepsodent regularly and give your smile the bold, irresistible beauty of dazzling white teeth. You'll love the cool peppermint flavor of Pepsodent. The right flavor for you, for all the family. Buy the big economy-sized Pepsodent. The size that saves you up to one and fivepence every time. For the whitest teeth, for the brightest smile, use Pepsodent. Buy Pepsodent tomorrow. All Australian artists appearing in Sorry Wrong Number are eligible for the Lux Hollywood Award, 
which at the end of our year of broadcast will take the Australian actor or actress judged to have given the year's best performance on a luxury flight to Hollywood. The winning artist will fly to California by Pan American World Airways Luxury President Service with stopovers at Fiji and Honolulu and while in Hollywood will be heard coast to coast through Canada and the United States on a broadcast of the American Lux Radio Theatre. Now, here's Eric Pierce with our star, Miss Miriam Hopkins. Well, Miriam, that was a really splendid performance of the most difficult role. Thank you, Eric. Sweet of you to say so. Sorry, Wrong Number was a fascinating script to me and one I'd never played until tonight, and that's why I wanted to do it. Well, we're certainly very happy that you were able to come here to play it for us. Uh, did you fly all the way? Oh, yes, by Pan American. Very comfortable, wonderful berth, divine food, and the fun of stopping at Honolulu and the Fijis en route. Then to find myself in Australia, where the people are intelligent and gracious and the scenery beautiful, well, what more could you want in any place? <laughs> really, I tell you, if I didn't have a little quickie visa for two weeks, I don't think you'd get rid of me very quickly. <laughs> no, we don't want to get rid of you, particularly <laughs> after tonight. I'm mm -hmm. sure we shall all miss you very much when you go, and we're most grateful yeah. that Lux has brought you down here. Uh, tell me, though, uh, this isn't the first time you star on a Lux radio theatre, is it? Oh, heavens, no. As a matter of fact, I started the Lux Radio Theatre in America in 1936, playing Diane in Seventh Heaven. So this is the second series of Lux Radio Theatre plays. I have the honour of opening. Oh, that's very nice, and we're very honoured too. In America now, the Lux Theatre's on television, isn't it? Well, that's right. It's mm. called the Lux Video Theatre. Oh, yes. I did Sunset Boulevard for them about a month ago. Mm -hmm. You know, with about a dozen Lux Radio and um, uh, five or six Lux Video shows behind me, I feel very much at home on all the Lux programs, just as the uh, Lux Toilet Soap feels at home around my house. <laughs> <laughs> you said the right thing. Yeah, I absolutely. gather that you must be one of the, <laughs> the famous nine out of every ten film stars. Well, I certainly <laughs> am. Whether in New York in the theatre or in Hollywood in the movies, Lux Soap has always been my favourite complexion care. But speaking of Hollywood, I hear you have a very fine actor flying out here for next week's show. Yes, indeed we have. Vincent Price, the star of uh, Dragonwick and uh, the new Columbia thriller, The Mad Magician, which is now showing in Sydney. Well, and what's Vincent playing? Uh, well, he's playing one of the most terrifying stories ever written, 1984. You know, it's the television play that practically called riots in England last month. Oh, yes, I know it. And it's very exciting. Well, now, as you told about Vincent Price next week, let me say a dear friend of mine, Melvin Douglas, who's out here to do a stage show, is flying up from Melbourne for the broadcast week after next. Mm -hmm. So, good luck to Lux, and good night, Australia. Thank you very much, and good night, Miriam Hopkins. For help with tonight's production, we're deeply indebted to the Postmaster General's Department, who cooperated in providing the special sound effects used in the play. Heard in our cast were Joe McCormick as Duffy, Georgie Sterling as Eloise, Max Osbiston as Henry, Dinah Shearing as Lillian, and Leonard Teal, Gordon Chater, Diana Perryman, John Alden, Babs Mayhew, Ken Wayne, Gwen Friend, and George Simpson Little. The Lux Radio Theatre is produced by Sterling McAvoy. Sorry, Wrong Number was adapted for broadcast by Ross Monson and Peter Yeldon and directed by Miss Fifi Banvard. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next week, the Lux Radio Theatre presents the second gala production in our new series of plays, George Orwell's terrifying vision of the future, 1984. Broadcast on television in London a few weeks ago, 1984 aroused violent protests from all over England, as many people recognised in it aspects of a world that was very much closer to them than the year which is used as the play's title. 1984 became headline news throughout the world, and by special arrangement with the author's estate, it has been made available for the Lux Radio Theatre. 
To play the leading role of Winston Smith, tragic victim of the thought police in England's grim future dictatorship, we're very proud to have the distinguished film star Vincent Price, who is flying from Hollywood especially for the broadcast. So remember, one week from tonight, Vincent Price in 1984 on the Lux Radio Theatre. And until then, this is Eric Pierce saying good night. <laughs> The makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes and Pepsodent invite you to tune in next week for 1984, starring Vincent Price in person, direct from Hollywood. Until then, this is the Lux Radio Theatre, signing off from 50 stations throughout the Commonwealth of Australia. Australia.